We bring in quite a lot of players who'll actually play for us this season. We bring in a new starting keeper in Sol Brin, who'll take Cissé's spot. We then bring in Cicero, a promising looking centre back. Arvid Hellström, our new starting DM. Lautaro Marzo, our new rotating left wing back. And finally, Franca and Herman Matondo. We probably won't play too much, but maybe rotate a bit in the league. The Champions League qualies were very easy this year, up until the playoffs. We breezed past RFS 13-0, Tirana 8-2 and Debrecen 7-1 on aggregate. We then faced CFR Cluj in the playoffs. Despite going 2-0 up in the first leg after goals from Kluivert and Valiente, we conceded twice to make it all tied going into the second leg. Fratzau gave us the lead after 34 minutes as he picked up a loose ball after a short corner. Cluj equalized right before the break though. After a couple of half chances for both teams, we got a pen in the 93rd minute, which Fratzau converted to officially qualify us for the Champions League league phase for the second year running. I'll be completely honest with you now, and say that this season wasn't the most exciting. So we're just gonna do a quick recap, and then move swiftly on to season 9. In the UCL, we won our first game against Red Star to get our first ever official Champions League win. Fratzau scored the only goal from the penalty spots. We then unfortunately lost all the rest of the games. We had close games with Bodo Glimt, Newcastle and Copenhagen, but the rest were pretty depressing to be honest. Valiente also got a straight red card for this, elbowing a guy straight in the face. Stop it! Get some help! We once again won the Super Cup, as we just about beat Lyria after extra time. Montagne scored a brace, and Clivert got the deciding goal in the 118th minute. In the cup, we eased past Fushikosova in the second round, with Gilvan getting a brace in both legs. We then won 6-2 on aggregate against Pristina Array, with 6 different players getting the goals. In the quarters, we'd face Balkani. We eased past them as well, as Valiente got a hat-trick in the second leg. Trepka from the second tier then got smashed 8-2 on aggregate, before we beat Lyria 2-0 in the final to claim our second Kosovan Cup. As for the league, we started brilliantly with 7 wins in a row. We then drew 2, won 2 and lost 1 in the next 5 games, which was so disappointing that I decided to change the tactic. I tried changing it to a defensive 4 with wingbacks, an anchor in the DM spot, a midfield 3 including a Metsala and a front 2. Even though it worked in the league, it really didn't work in the USL, and we conceded way too many goals all round. So after 3 league games, a cup game and a UCL game with that tactic, I reverted to the old trusty 5-2-2-1. From that moment on, we won the next 6 games to make it 9 wins in a row, before we drew 1-1 with Veles Nimi of all teams. We then won 3-0 and 3-1 against Dranica and Fushikosova, before having a chance of winning the title in the next game against Jelani. We won that game 6-1, with Fratzau scoring 4 of the 6. So we lift the Super League for the fourth time in a row and we move up to second behind Pristina on the list of teams with the most titles. So we end up with a record 81 points this season and a new record for amount of wins with 26 out of 30. The race for the three other European spots went right down to the wire, with Jelani, Fushikosova and Balkani claiming them. Fushikosova is outrageous by the way. As late as 2026, they were in the second tier. And the crazy thing is, they only have three players on loan from us. The signings in the January window were actually pretty big. First of all, we brought in Figueredo for free. He's a promising Brazilian centre mid. We then brought in a right back in Luciano Barros for 400k. He'll probably take Mateus' spot in the team. The second last signing was Juan Manuel Solari for 500k from Newell's Old Boys, a very promising goalkeeper who will be taking Solbrin's spot already. The final signing is the big one. This is Jorge Vargas. You have nicknamed the Ghost. Let's just look at him. He's a ghost. Anyway, we brought him in for a record fee of 5.25 million. He's already a brilliant player and will also develop more. 
We have probably overpaid a bit, but we needed a big signing. And finally, the results in Europe and the coefficient rankings. Balkany won 3-1 on aggregate against Noah, 4-2 on aggregate against Swift Hesperang, but was then knocked out on penalties against KR from Iceland. Ilani went through the first quarter round on pens, and then lost 4-1 on aggregate against Piast from Poland. Lyria first went through 4-2 on aggregate against Finnish side SJK, then they surprisingly won 3-2 on aggregate against FCSB from Romania, they then impressively drew 3-3 against Karabag in the first leg, but then lost 4-1 away from home. As for the coefficient rankings, we've got 5.875 points, so we've actually improved on last year, and we're now moving from 40th all the way up to 30th place. That's an incredible year! And from next year, we've got one team in the UCL obviously, one in the Europa League now, and two in the second quality round of the Conference League. That's actually pretty decent. Well, let's move on to the ninth season. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. And a happy new year. We made a couple of big signings this summer. Anton Kisena, a young striker. Emilio Caparros, a young Argentinian DM, came in for 1.9 million. And the biggest by far, Joaquim Paiva. We bought him for 16 and a half million pounds. And this might be very stupid, but I'm going to retrain him into a left wing back. He's not very tall. He's a very small man. And he has some good stats for a left wing back role in my opinion. But we'll see in a few months if he's usable there or not. Just like last year, we flew through the qualies for the Champions League. We smashed Vikingur 15-nil on aggregate, Pax 4-nil and Derry City 6-nil. Then we'd face Shakhtar in the playoff, a team we'd played in last year's Champions League league phase and drawn two. In the first leg we went 2-0 up in the first half as Almendra and Fratzao scored one each. Shakhtar's Maikon then scored this free kick, which we can't even see. Gorka Alonso then defended like this, which led to Shakhtar equalizing. Fratzao then, deservedly for us, scored in the 92nd to give us the lead going into the second leg. Basically nothing happened in the second leg, before Solari palmed the ball to a Shakhtar player in the 84th which led to a goal, and eventually extra time. Thankfully we got a pen in the 92nd which Kisuna scored, and then the same man scored again in the 106th to put it beyond all doubt, as we once again qualify for the Champions League league phase. We've also won the Super Cup again, as Valiente scored twice to turn the game around before he got a straight red for doing this, but it didn't matter as we won it either way. So we've now got Chelsea at home, and a massive chance to cause an upset after the hammering two seasons ago. Their manager, Michel, even said we were an easy opponent. Other than a decent chance for both teams, there weren't any real danger in the first half but we actually had the upper hand. Early on in the second half, we took the lead through Figueredo, or Figs as I've started calling him. Chelsea took control of the game from here though, as they scored an offside goal and hit the post before Corbalan missed this huge chance. The inevitable did happen in the end, as Chelsea scored through Nicolas Jackson and tied the game up. That was also the result, as we've drawn to Chelsea that's pretty crazy when you think about the 5-1 hammering last time we faced them. And we weren't that easy of an opponent, were we, Michel? The next UCL game was away to Ajax. We got the lead in the 18th, from a pen scored by Fratzao. Literally nothing happened until Hellstrom got injured just a few minutes after coming on. And we've used all our subs, so we're down to 10 men. And that got punished, as Owen Weindahl scored for Ajax in the 86th. But I'm actually okay with that result, as we were massive underdogs going into the game. We do also just need two wins in the next six games to basically be guaranteed a place through to the knockouts. You're probably wondering why I'm not mentioning any league fixtures. It's because it's become very stale and easy to win, so it's not too entertaining. I was planning on giving the control of the league to my assistant Stol Kaku, who returned to us last season, but he got poached by Kaku. So I've had to give the reins to David Kaba instead. Back to the UCL, we're facing Stuttgart at home. We had some big chances in the opening few minutes. But the Ghost and Kisena couldn't converge. Solari then made a big save as we head into the break level. 10 minutes into the second half though, Barros put this great cross into Kisena who scored to give us the lead. 
Three minutes later, Kisena missed another big chance. But it wouldn't matter as Stuttgart didn't manage to score a legit goal. They did score an offside goal, but we won the game in the end. We've clearly made some huge progress in the past year to be performing this well against top European sides. We're up against another German team in the next game, as we face Bayer Leverkusen away at the Bayer Arena. Figs gave us the lead in the 26th. Ballerini then got to run the entire length of the pitch without any pressure before Boniface scored to be leveled at the break. We then took the lead again, this time through Marzo with a great finish. We then conceded straight away before conceding a third 10 minutes after that, which means we lose our first UCL game of the season, in a game where we had a lead twice. Somehow we managed to sign Thomas Rositsky as our new director of football, so I'm gassed with that. I then got some of the best news I've ever got, as the hater got sacked by Drita. We've now got Red Star Belgrade away in Serbia, which is a game we should be winning considering our results against much better opposition. We took a 2-0 lead in the first half, as Gilvan and Kisena scored one each. Red Star then scored in the 67th, as we were asleep, before Hellström gave them the ball so they can score again in the 82nd. But we fortunately scored straight from kickoff, as Marzo won the ball back after losing it and Fratzau scored a tap-in to give us the win and we're now basically guaranteed to go through to the playoff round. The next game against Sporting was a relatively tame one. Gilvan scored a free kick through the wall to give us the lead. And I don't think Sporting's goalie will be too happy with this wall. What are you doing? <laughs> Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. Except for that goal, Kisuna scored an offside goal, and Sporting missed their only chance in the game. So we won another UCL game. Now we're officially ready for some form of UCL knockouts. By the way, my experiment with Joaquin Paiva has most certainly been a success. He's officially become a left wing back now, and he's performed brilliantly in the last few games as well. We're now heading to the Bernabeu to face Real Madrid. Bellingham scored very easily against us after just 5 minutes. We then scored from our first chance right before the break, as Kisana scored this tap-in. We then took the lead as Gilvan scored this in the 53rd. Paiva, completely unprovoked and unnecessary, got his second yellow. So we're down to 10 men. Whoops. The inevitable did happen in the 71st, as Camavinga scored. But they didn't get a winner. We've drawn away to Real Madrid, and while playing almost half the game a man down as well. Against AC Milan, Fratzao scored early to give us the lead. But Rafaleao scored less than two minutes later. Barros then gave away a pen in the 41st. But Solari came up clutch and saved it. Literally nothing happened in the second half, so we've drawn to Milan as well. This was the final standings in the league phase. We got 19th place, which is really good. But it would have been nice to get into the top 16, as we'd get a way bigger chance of drawing a worse team. We then got to the day of the draw. The team I really wanted was Anderlecht, as all the other seeded teams were giants. We most certainly didn't get Anderlecht. We got PSG. F*** me, man. We're at home in the first leg, but we were without Fratzao, as he got injured against Milan. And we've also got four players suspended. Marzo, Cicero, Barros and the Ghost are all suspended. Despite a big chance for both teams in the first half, we went into the break level. 20 minutes into the second however, we put together one of the best attacks I've seen from this team. All the way from our goalie Solari up to our new left wing back Paiva, who scored. Less than 10 minutes later, Paiva scored again. PSG unfortunately scored in the 79th, which means we have a one goal advantage in the second leg in Paris. That's an amazing result, and considering we were missing 5 key players as well. Sule missed a big chance after just 11 minutes in the second leg, and we took advantage of that. Paiva hit the bar, but Almendra scored a rebound to extend our aggregate lead to 3-1. 20 minutes later though, our best performing player lately, Paiva, got injured and had to be replaced by Marzo. 
That was the start of the downfall. Militao scored this in the aftermath of a corner, and Sule scored this just two minutes after that. So we're now all tied up on aggregate going into the break. Somiyasu then scored a header for the Parisians before our goalie Solari got injured. We couldn't bring our backup on as we'd used all our stoppages, so I had to put Cicero in goal. PSG scored twice more in the last 15 minutes, so we crashed out of the Champions League after a horrific second leg where everything went against us. I am in pain. I am in severe pain. We once again won the league very comfortably, as we got 76 points compared to Yelani 63 in second place. It was a bit worse than it's been in the past two seasons, but we won it comfortably either way. Kisena also claimed the top scorer along with one of our loanees, Mario Farako. Farako actually had 13 goals in 13 games, but really slowed down in the second half of the season. We also won the cup. We first beat Lyria, then stole Kakus Kekyu, then Veles Nimi, and then Balkani to reach the final, where we beat Drita 4-0 to claim our third straight Kosovan Cup and also our third straight domestic treble. The coefficients are looking really good as well. We've got 9 points this season, and we're moving up 7 places, up to 23rd. But we really need the other Kosovan teams to pull their weight now, as none of them have made a European league phase since Drita all those years ago. Do your job then! Do your job or don't do it then! Do your job! Don't boil it!